Hi, my name is Anil Yalam. I'm a third year PhD student at the University of California, San Diego. In this video, I'm going to talk about our paper titled Co-Resident Evil, Covert Communication in the Cloud with Lambdas. I did this work in collaboration with my colleagues Shibani Subaridi, Hitana Ganeshan, Ariana Mirian, uh, with guidance from Professor Stephen Savage. Cloud computing has seen tremendous growth in the past decade, uh, with organizations increasingly offloading their computational and storage needs to um, third-party cloud platforms. So the economics of these cloud platforms is uh, dependent on these high levels of statistical multiplexing and sharing of computing uh, infrastructure among tens of thousands of these tenants. Um, but however, this comes with a this opens up a lot of security and privacy risks um, that inspired a lot of research, security research in the past decade in this particular area. But a lot of this work has been focused on long-lived heavyweight computing instances like the virtual machines. In the recent years, cloud platforms have provided um, a new computing paradigm in the form of serverless functions. Um, that's a wide adoption in with a range of applications. By design, lambdas are short-lived and run in lightweight containers um, with reduced memory footprint to uh, enable even higher levels of statistical multiplexing um, and enable like lower startup latencies. Um, due to this, they come with significant cost savings for applications that uh, applications where lambdas fit their computational uh, needs. However, the security side of lambdas is relatively uh, less explored compared to their heavier weight counterparts like virtual machines. Part of the reason um, is because uh, lambdas with their dynamic and transient nature uh, provide a more challenging environment for the attackers to um, you know, manifest any of the attacks in a consistent way. Um, but however, their low cost and lightweight isolation present new opportunities for attackers as well. So in this work, we explore these issues um, through the lens of a single question, uh, which is, can we manifest covert channels in the cloud with lambdas? Covert channels as a general matter uh, provide a way of transmitting data using these uh, non-typical unintended channels to bypass monitoring slash auditing mechanisms. Um, generally, they assume that there is a insider or a compromised host that has access to sensitive data and then is willing to sort of transmit that data over the covert channel. Um, in a shared environment like cloud, they, the covert channels typically exploit shared hardware um, like the last level processor cache or the memory bus, um, uh, etc. to bypass cloud's isolation mechanisms However, lambdas pose a lot of challenges in enabling covert communication using these covert channels in the cloud. Firstly, we don't even know if the sender and receiver lambda are on the same machine or how to actually get them on the same machine to make use of this channel. Um, because when you deploy a set of lambdas in the cloud, the placement and their placement and scheduling information is not really known. Um, so we need we first need a mechanism a viable mechanism for co-residence detection. However, the de detection sh detector should be really fast because um, lambdas are short-lived and uh, uh, we wanna detect the co-residence really fast and then move on to performing actual code communication uh, with the rest of the time. Um, and it should also be comprehensive in the sense that it should detect all the lambdas running on the machine, not just the sender, not just the fact that the sender and receiver are on the same machine because we want to avoid any uh, unwanted interference from um, other lambdas that may end up on the same machine. So that gets us to the contributions that we make in the paper. Um, the first of which is we propose a fast co-residence detector for lambdas that uh, runs in a matter of seconds for thousands of lambdas um, and allows for precise uh, detection of all the lambdas uh, that are co-located um, that you know enables us to avoid this interference that we, I was talking about. Um, once we have the co-residence detector, we use it to manifest covert channels um, in AWS, a real world cloud with lambdas. So let's talk about the co-residence detector first. So by definition, co-residence detector should, for a set of lambdas deployed, identify um, all the co-located sets of lambdas that run 
on the same uh, underlying server. So naturally, the next the question that we would one might ask is how can the co-located lambdas um, maybe talk to each other and figure out uh, the neighbors, their neighbors, the other lambdas that are running on the same machine. So uh, in the past, uh, studies have used these uh, software level identifying information um, that are exposed by uh, imperfections in cloud isolation mechanisms. For example, uh, possibly a unique identifier of the physical machine that was inadvertently exposed by the cloud to the tenants. But these sort of software level identifiers are um, easily fixable by like, you know, a software upgrade and uh, and also they are no longer available. We, we, do, we couldn't find any of these uh, particularly with lambdas on AWS. Um, so in this work, we use a hardware-based code channel for core resonance detection. Um, that is generally harder to fix and so it's more reliable from an attacker perspective. So the particular core channel that we're gonna use um, is based on the memory bus hardware. The way that this core channel works is it transmits bits by using uh, contention on the memory bus hardware um, that a process could cause by issuing these special memory access operations um, that end up locking the memory bus. So we use this core channel because it has some desirable, certain desirable properties that we uh, require of a core channel. Like it, it has, uh, as far as core channels go, it comes with very high bandwidth. Also, it, it is still present on all the major clouds as we have verified, um, and is accessible from the serverless functions on those clouds as well. So coming back to the core residence detection, um, the question was, how do the co-located lambdas um, you know, figure out their neighbors. So using the covert channel, one can imagine that the lambdas can just communicate their unique IDs uh, with each other. However, it's not that trivial because the covert channels, um, covert channels are generally very simple in that they do not really support multi-party communication. I mean, in our case, we have uh, an N number of lambdas that are on the same machine and wants to all of them wants to communicate their IDs. So uh, core channels do not come with these underlying mechanisms like collision detection or channel arbitration uh, that you usually find in traditional channels like Ethernet, for example. Um, so we're gonna have to go with a much simpler protocol. So we make the insight that the lambdas <clears throat> do not need to do any general communication. Uh, they only need to communicate their NBIT identifiers with their neighbors. So we propose a simple um, ID broadcast protocol that uh, lambdas that end up on the same server can use to exchange their IDs. Um, so the I will quickly discuss the protocol with an example. Uh, so before the protocol, we have, let's say, K lambdas uh, with unique identifiers. Uh, and when the protocol ends, we want every lambda to know the IDs of rest of its, uh, um, all the neighbors, all its neighbors. So the protocol runs in phases, um, particularly for K phases, where in each phase, we're gonna try and broadcast ID of one lambda. Um, so let's look at one phase with a concrete example. Um, so uh, let's say we have three lambdas with IDs three, five, and six. Um, in the phase one, all the lambdas are participating and uh, you know each phase runs in three slots, three being the number of bits in the ID, which is a predetermined constant. So in slot one, we're gonna look at the most significant bit of their ID. And lambdas usually have two actions to perform. One, if the bit is one, they, they're just gonna lock the memory bus and cause contention on the bus, or if the bit is zero, they're, uh, they, they're just gonna listen and uh, see if the memory bus was being contented. And based on this feedback, they're gonna record a bit at the end of the slot, um, meaning one, if the memory bus hardware was actually contended by any of the lambdas, um, or zero, if the memory bus hardware was not. So in this exam, in, in the first slot, both five and six were causing uh, locking on the memory bus, so everyone records a one. So here's the interesting part. After the slot, um, the lambdas that figured out that there are, um, some of some of the some of its neighbors may have like higher IDs will stop participating in the phase. In this particular case, three now figures out that 
there there are certainly lambdas that are bigger than itself and so it stops participating for the rest of the phase um, so in the second slot we have five and six participating the same thing happens and in this case six locks the bus whereas both five and three just listen um, and they all record one because ultimately the memory bus hardware was in contention similarly for the third phase uh, where no one contends the bus and everyone just hears is zero so at the end of the phase we have all the lambdas that are participating um, um, that got to know the id of the highest lambda which is six in this case so the time complexity is k which is the number of lambdas that are on the machine multiplied by the number of bits in their id um, and so that makes it logarithmic in the number of lambdas deployed which makes the whole protocol really scalable so we evaluate the technique with respect to three uh, desirable properties which is speed scalability and reliability so uh, I sh uh, we show you a chart here um, that plots the running time of the co resonance detector protocol in seconds um, over the number of lambdas actually involved so as you can see from the y-axis the the max running time is like a 30 seconds which is feasible uh, which makes it really feasible with lambdas and the growth of the running time is logarithmic in the number of lambdas deployed, um, making it really scalable for thousands of lambdas deployed. Now, coming to reliability, we wanted to see um, uh, if the information returned by this protocol was actually uh, correct, right? Uh, <clears throat> and it turns out that the reliability of this Covo channel itself uh, depend, is dependent on the um, is, is higher for bigger lambdas, uh, possibly because there are less scheduler interruptions for, for bigger lambdas. Um, in any case, for sufficiently bigger lambdas, we saw that the protocol was uh, saw 0% error rate. So once we have this co-residence detector, we are uh, going to use it to now manifest these COBO channels on AWS. So how, how are we going to go about doing that? So we launch a bunch of lambdas with unique identifiers onto the cloud. Um, you know, some of them may end up on the same machine. Um, at a predetermined time, all the lambdas are going to run this core residence protocol that we just talked about. Once we have that information, the lambdas can then arbitrarily um, pick a sender and a receiver lambda and establish a core channel um, and perform communications without any interference from um, the other lambdas on the same server. So two numbers that we are interested in measuring in this scenario is one is the density, that is how many COVO channels can we manifest, um, for example, some thousand lambdas launched into the cloud. Um, the other thing is for each of those COVO channels, what is the amount of data um, that we can transfer? So uh, with regards to the COVO channel density, um, we perform experiments in uh, a bunch of AWS regions, we count the number of unique servers with their, where two or more lambdas got co-located. This actually gives us the number of potential covert channels that we can manifest um, per, thousand per every thousand lambdas launched into the cloud. As you can see from the plot, there's, we can actually uh, enable from tens, anywhere between tens to hundreds of covert channels for every thousand lambdas launched. So to get the capacity of each individual channel, we used a simple protocol based off of previous work. Um, and uh, we showed that, you know, as a conservative estimate, we could get reliably up to 200 bits per second uh, per each, uh, each channel that we established. So combined with the, you know, the core channel density of hundreds of core channels per lambdas, um, this this could give up to some 20 kilobit per second in uh, total cover channel capacity for 1000 lambdas deployed into the cloud, um, which is a lot. So in conclusion, we, uh, we, uh, in this work, we show that covert communication with lambdas is entirely feasible. Um, so we, to show that, we proposed a robust core resonance detector for lambdas um, using a covert channel. And we use that coresonance detector to manifest Lambda covert channels and perform covert communication on AWS. So through this work, we hope to raise the attention to uh, security aspects of Lambdas. Thank you.